Beloved in Christ, we welcome all of you to this morning's Mass. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent, and we'll begin our Mass with hymn 88, which says, Glory be to Jesus. So we will stand and sing hymn 88. Give me justice, O God, and plead my cause against a nation that is faithless. From the deceitful and cunning rescue me, for you, O God, are my strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Beloved in Christ, today is the fifth Sunday of Lent. And in our worship this morning, we ask that God will continue to protect and guide us, that all our heart desires, God will grant it for us. We also pray that even as we enter Passion Week, God himself will lead us through it to the glory of his name. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned 
in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, for the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. be with you. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this, I am now going to open your graves. I mean to raise you from your graves, my people, and lead you back to the soil of Israel. And you will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, my people. And I shall put my spirit in you, and you will live. And I shall resettle you on your own soil, and you will know that I, the Lord, have said and done this. It is the Lord who speaks the word of the Lord. Response Psalm. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleading. With the voice there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? But with you is found forgiveness. For this we revere you. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness in redemption. My soul is waiting for the Lord. I count on his word. My soul is longing for the Lord, more than watchman for daybreak. Let the watchman count on daybreak and Israel on the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Because with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption, Israel indeed he will redeem from all its iniquity. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness in redemption.
The second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. People who are only interested only in unspiritual things can never be pleasing to God. Your interests, however, are not in the unspiritual, but in the spiritual, since the Spirit of God has made his home in you. In fact, unless you possess the Spirit of Christ, you would not belong to him. Though your body may be dead, it is because of sin. But if Christ is in you, then your spirit is life itself, because you have been justified. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, then he who raised Jesus from the dead will give life to your own mortal bodies through his spirit living in you. The word of the Lord. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man named Lazarus who lived in the village of Bethany with his two sisters, Mary and Martha, and he was ill. It was the same Mary, the sister of the sick man Lazarus, who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. The sisters sent this message to Jesus. Lord, the man you love is ill. On receiving the message, Jesus said, This sickness will end, not in death, but in God's glory, and through it the Son of God will be glorified. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, yet when they heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was for two more days before saying to the disciples, Let us go to Judea. The disciple said, Rabbi, it is not long since the Jews wanted to stone you, and you are going back again. Jesus replied, Are they not twelve hours in the day? A man can walk in the daytime without stumbling, because he has the light of the world to see by. But if he walks at night, he stumbles, because there is no light to guide him. He said that, and then added, our friend Lazarus is resting. I am going to wake him. The disciple said to him, Lord, if he is able to rest, he is sure to get better. The phrase Jesus used to the death of Lazarus, but they thought that by rest he meant sleep. So Jesus put it plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad I was not there, because now you will believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, known as the twin, said to the other disciples, Let us go too and die with him. On arriving, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for two days, four days already. Bethany is only about two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to sympathize with them over their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to meet him. Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been there, my brother would not have died. But I know that, even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. 
Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who has come into the world. When she said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in a low voice, The Master is here and he wants to see you. Hearing this, Mary got up quickly and went to him. Jesus had not yet come into the village. He was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were in the house sympathizing with Mary saw her get up so quickly and go out, they followed her, thinking that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Mary went to Jesus, and as soon as she saw him, she threw herself at his feet, saying, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. At the sight of her tears, and those of the Jews who followed her, Jesus said in great distress, with a sigh that came straight from the heart, Where have you put him? They said, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. And the Jews said, See how much he loved him. But there were some who remarked, He opened the eyes of the blind man. Could he not have prevented this man's death? Still sighing, Jesus reached the tomb. It was a cave with a stone to close the opening. Jesus said, Take the stone away. Martha said to him, Lord, by now he will smell. This is the fourth day. Jesus replied, have I not told you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I knew indeed that you always hear my name. But I speak for the sake of all these who stand around me, so that they may believe it was you who sent me. When he had said this, he cried in a loud voice, Lazarus, here, come out. The dead man came out, his feet and hands bound with the bands of stuff and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, Unbind him, let him go free. Mary and the Jews who had come to visit Mary had seen what he did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please take a well-deserved seat after that long gospel. Some people will say to you that Jesus was not popular. In fact, he was so unpopular that they crucified him. But the truth is, Jesus was popular. Scripture is full of examples of crowds following Jesus, so desperate to hear what he had to say. But more so because they were interested in seeing what Jesus could do. They were far more interested in his signs and his miracles. The healing that he carried out. Now, of course, he was unpopular with some because of what he taught. And in particular, he was unpopular with those in power, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees that we've been learning about and hearing about over the last three months or so. And the reason he was unpopular with them is because he was interested in spiritual things. He was interested in teaching in the things of God. Whereas the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees were interested in the unspiritual things. They were interested in their comfortable lives that they had created through being able to control those around them and by attempting to nail down the spiritual things of God into those books of law. So unpopular was Jesus with these people that at the end of John, uh, John chapter 8, it's verse 59, I think, the Jews start to pick up stones to throw at him 
and to accuse him of being possessed by a demon. Why? Why were they so upset with what Jesus was saying? So upset that they were going to stone him. It's because Jesus confronted those in power in the temple and told them who he was. I am the light of the world. And they don't believe him. They cannot see because they are so focused on the unspiritual world. They are so focused on trying to grab the awesomeness of God and codify it and put it down so that they can live their comfortable lives unburdened with difficult and uncomfortable truths. Jesus is a threat to their power, their comfort, and how they live out their comfortable faith. None of us really like being told uncomfortable things, do we? <laughs> and we often react badly to being told uncomfortable things. When we've got something wrong, or we're not understanding, or we read something in scripture that is difficult to take on board. We often react like children having a tantrum in disgust. That reaction of disgust is one that we see time and time again from those who are threatened by the truth that Jesus brings. So threatened were they that they picked up stones to throw. And at the end of John chapter 8, we read that Jesus hides. That is why on Passion Sunday, as we enter Passion Tide, our statues are veiled. As we enter this great story at the end of Lent, as we get to the fifth Sunday of Lent and enter Passion Tide, Jesus hides. Our statues are veiled. Jesus know what is ahead, and of course, so do we. So then how does Jesus emerge from this hiding? That is the subject of today's gospel. He emerges from hiding by doing what he always does. By action, by doing, he emerges through signs and miracles. He waits for his friend to die, knowing that fulfilling the scripture the scripture, Ezekiel, that we read first. And despite the pain that we can clearly see, it caused him and Mary and Martha and their friends, he waits for his friends to die. Because he knows that it is through that sign and that miracle that they will believe. We see it time and time again. Jesus talks and teaches and people react. Jesus does, and people follow. Jesus was very popular when he did things, when people were able to see his faith in action. Jesus couldn't teach us, we couldn't hear it. He came to die for us, that we may be saved and find a home with him in heaven. We couldn't hear that. We had to see it. He had to do it. Despite the pain personal to him and to those who loved him, he did it. And this is the story that we now face over the coming two weeks. He said he was the light of the world and they accused him of possession and tried to stone him. He brought his friend back from the dead and they cheered him and said, I believe. He arrives in Jerusalem as a king, cheered. He tells them what they need to do to follow him and they crucify him. 
but he rises from the dead in glory and we cheer him once again. He is the light and we believe. So now it is up to us to avoid falling into that same trap that the Pharisees, the scribes and the Sadducees and the Jewish people of the time did by ignoring what Jesus said and only believing when he does. Jesus has died for us on the cross. Jesus has risen again for us. And so over the next two weeks, we will emerge from hiding, covered in the glory of what Jesus Christ did for all of us. But first, we must endure that pain. First, we must endure that loss. First, we must carry the price of living out our faith in the world. People will not come to know Jesus Christ if we simply talk about him. People will come to know Jesus Christ when they see us doing his work in the world. People will come to know Jesus Christ when they see you focused on the spiritual and not on the unspiritual. Through your loving devotion to God's word, to working in the world in the way he called us to, to show the world who he was and what he did for us and what difference it makes in your life. Jesus signs and miracles still happen. They happen through you. Do Jesus' work in the world and make him known. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us stand now and profess our faith. As we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. As the people of the living God, let us join together in our praise for the church and for the world. May God breathe his life into the church, breathe holiness and deepening faith, breathe energy, inspired teaching and fervent praise. May he unblock the channels and make us more receptive to his gentleness and his power. Lord, in your mercy, our may God breathe his life into the universe, breathe caring, honesty, and compassion, breathe right values and good stewardship, peace and reconciliation, vision and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. may God breathe his life into our homes and places of work, breathed increased patience and understanding, and the courage to live the Christian life, when to do so brings ridicule or demands sacrifice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
May God breathe his life into those who suffer, especially on Wayne Campbell and Kevin Riley and his family, Norma Piggott, Gemma, Mark, Deborah Ann Potts, Chantal and baby Winter Rose Calise Jimu, Adrian Calist, Mavis and Daniel Sibley, Renee Holman, Desmond DeGale, Susan and her family. May he breathe comfort and wholeness into them, forgiveness and new confidence, breathe peace of mind and the knowledge of his love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. May God breathe his life into the dead and the dying, especially those who've died this night without access to priest or sacrament. For those who have died around the world proclaiming your holy name, for those torn from the womb, and for those whose anniversary of death fall this week. For William Henry Smith, John Livy, Eileen Jones, Derek Holman, Kath Mark, Father Clive Pierce, George Richard Hearn, Father Anthony Bird, priest of this parish, Betty Patricia Hodgkins, Ivor Bailey, Indra Hins, Betty Patricia Hodgkins, Henry Hawkins, Charles Channon, and Freddie Wilson. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, breed courage for the journey and the realization that you can be trusted. May you breathe life that lasts forever into all of us. So that as we turn to Mary, Mother of God, Mother of our Saviour, Comforter and Carer, we are able to pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Trustingly, we pray in silence to our loving God, who considers each one of us as special. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. There is a green hill far away in 300 
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord has set the sacrifice in your hands, the praise and glory of His name. For all good and the good of all His holy children. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For us, true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him the host of angels adore your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with yes in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the need and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Justin, our Archbishop, Jonathan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep with the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit the full heads to turn our life. May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. As the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. The peace of the Lord. Behold, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. 
Everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever, says the Lord. Beloved in Christ, watching us online, at this point we want to encourage all of you to also make your spiritual communion.
the Lord be. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have been, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please sing. I publish the bands of marriage between Gert Dari Narendra Fernando Bachelor St. Anselm Hayes and Shireen Sinos Clements Savarimutu Spinster St. Anselm Hayes if any of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, ye are to declare it. This is the second time of asking. Beloved in Christ, uh, we want to welcome all of you to our Mass today, and we pray that you get all the blessings that you've been praying for, and that God will continue to shower his um, love and grace upon our lives. Beloved in Christ, we want to encourage all of you to take the pew sheets home. We have all the announcements and notices at the back, and... Um, just to give a gist of uh, what we have in here. We will have um, our kids coming around to help with the Easter garden in the Lady Chapel. Then um, we want to also remind everyone that Sunday we are having our Palm Sunday on Sunday. And because we are going to start outside at 10 a.m., if by any chance you uh, run late, you may not experience it. You know, this happens once every year. So we want to encourage all of you to try as much as possible to come on time so that you will not miss anything. We are also trying to come up with um, Sunday School Club or a Children's Service. And hopefully we're going to start on the 30th of April. And the time is from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. It is for the children and the youth. It will be very interesting. So we want to encourage all of you to be part of it. If you want to do anything or you want to ask any questions, you want to be part of it in any way, you can speak to Father Josiah, Julie, or Susan. Yeah, um, we also want to encourage all of you to join us for tea at the church hall immediately after Mass. God bless you. Christina, you celebrate in your birthday. Christina, please come for your birthday card and your birthday song. Happy birthday to you. Happy on her behalf. To you. Happy birthday to Christina. Happy birthday to you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gifts of your mercy 
and grant that thought at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace, the Mass ascended. Thanks be to God. The angel of the Lord brought tidings unto Mary. And she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. For forth we receive thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion, we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hymn 271. 